Hello, good people, and welcome to Finest Skills Hub. Here, we learn, we connect, and we grow. Well, if you have been following our series on how to create maps in Power BI, this is the third edition. In the first video, we showed you how to create maps in Power BI using Custom Visual. So we used OKVis to do that. Then we followed it up with another video that showed you how to create maps using Custom Shape Maps, again in Power BI. In this third episode, we want to explore how to use ArcGIS, which is another visual for maps in Power BI. We'll compare the down and upside using ArcGIS against example shape maps and the rest of the tools here. So if you're game, join me in Power BI and let's get started. Right, so we are going to use the same example we used when we created the shape map. This is data on Ghana's election, not the real numbers. This has been modified for academic purposes. But the basic idea is that we want to view on a regional basis the vote trends or the total vote cast for the two leading parties. This is a typical use case for ArcGIS. So if you look at my Power BI report, I have a dedicated space for this map. I'm going to fit it right here. The ArcGIS visual is located in the list of visuals. If you scroll to the map category, this is typically the fourth icon here. So we have ArcGIS for Power BI. So we are going to activate it. Ideally, you should be connected to the internet, right? So that is one downside. You have to work online. So I'm going to connect this. So it gives me an initial placeholder. As you can see, I can now enlarge this okay you can choose to sign in create an account i'm sure having a license gives you more options but you can also continue as guest right i mean at this point you don't really have to do anything just as we have with typical map data you just have to put in the location on one axis and what you are measuring on the other side right so in terms of location you could use the names that you have in your data if they are represented on the map or you could use coordinates so you can use y and x coordinates if they are available in your map then you provide what you are measuring either as a measure or as a value field right so i'm going to load for location so i'll go for location in my list of data sets the location is under my dimension table for region so this is going to be the 16 regions in ghana so i'm going to feed the set this side with a location so once you feed in the location you realize some activity on the map but i'll add the measure to size you can add that to size or you can add it to color right so i'm going to go to size and again i have it here under my measures so i've calculated the total vote cast so i'm going to Put in total vote cast. So essentially, these two fields should be enough to activate for us to see some activity on the map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just expand this. Okay, go into focus mode so that we can see what we have. Initially, you are going to get a global map. Okay, then you have this map tool to your left. Okay, so the map tool has the layers first icon it also has the base map it has the selection tool you can search and then you can also do analysis right it also gives you the option to modify some settings but our focus is once the map comes in a lot of the action we are going to do here are going to be on the layer side right so if i expand the layers already it has profiled one layer which is the region that i am using okay so this is the region you already see a range of the total votes cast, right? So in the layer section, there's also an icon for symbology. So over here, we can change the symbol type, right? So as you can see, the default is bubbles, right? So you can come in here, change it to a heat map if you like. So you can also change it to location or you can bring it to the size, which essentially reads the measure that you have in there. Okay, so this is for the symbols. Then you come to the settings for style options. Okay, so again, here you can change how the symbols appear. So we have some options here. 
And you can also change the color as well, right? So that is for the option for styles, right? Then we can come and then look at labels. So you can show labels here in ArcGIS. The only challenge is that from what I have, I don't know if the licensing gives more options. You can show only one label at a time. So you can show either region or the values. Okay, so you have to toggle and then choose either region or values. Maybe if you have a license, you can choose both, but this is what we have for now. Now, the last icon is what is really important. Because we want to zoom into Ghana, we are not going to use the global map. So this last icon allows us to set the location. So currently we have region, but it's pointing to the world, right? So what you need to do is come in here and look for Ghana or look for whatever country that your data is focused on. So I'm going to choose Ghana here. Now it's still set to points. So the points will leave it as bubbles or shapes on the map. But we can switch to boundaries, right? So I can switch to boundaries. And when I switch to boundaries, I still get the option to update the geographical area from districts to regions. Okay. If I do this, what it's going to basically do is that it's going to zoom in and then give me the exact regions. So there's also the option to set this to an exact match if, let's say, you want to be very accurate with the data set. Okay. So that option is also available. So, so far, what we've been seeing is just the total votes cast represented by shapes or bubbles. But if you really want to set the boundary or the shape and then color, maybe get a heat map and all that, you can come to the second option. Okay. Then in the symbol type, you can use location. Okay. So what this does is that it's colors essentially wherever voting happened. But for our purpose, this is not going to be useful. So if you want to color every region, then of course you may have to use a heat map unless you want to see areas where X happened and areas where X didn't happen. Okay. So if you want to use a heat map while painting the whole area, what you can do is I'm going to go back to my report. Okay. And then in the data field, I'll come back here. Okay. Then for color, I'm going to add the same measure. So I'll hit the plus sign, come to measures, and then again, put in the total vote cast. Right. What this is going to do is that it's temporarily going to reset, go back to the bubbles as we had it. Then if I come back to my layer settings, I can come here, come to color and size, and then choose color. So this gives me something like a heat map, but this fills all the 16 regions. Of course, you can change the colors. So if I come to the style options, right, I have a lot of color ramp options here. So you can choose from all the categories that we have here, right? I prefer this one. Okay. So we have this consistent blue shade is colorblind friendly as well. Okay. So we have something like this. So this tells me that there was a lot of action in the Ashanti and Greater Accra region. Right. Now, let's go back to our report and look at one important setting. So if you have this, you realize that the map is not properly zoomed in. We can come to the map settings. So I'm going to select this, come to the map settings, go to more options. Right. So in the default settings, there are some options that we can talk about. So you can turn off the title if you want. Okay. Then you have options to turn off some of the map settings, right? So the layers, the base map and all those things are things that you can play with. But under map controls, right? So far we've not seen any zoom settings. You can turn on the zoom tool, which will now bring the option to zoom in. So essentially you can come and then zoom in to the points where you want to lock this regions. So I have now zoomed into the point where I can see all the 16 regions. Okay. So this is what we have. So usually when you zoom in, okay, you can come to the map controls and then maybe lock the extent of the zoom in. So for this purpose, it would be useful to probably insert a slicer 
and for analysis bring in maybe the two parties so in this case i have my two parties under the dimension table called candidates i'll bring in party okay so if i bring in party if i pick let's say the ndc you should be able to see where the action happened a lot for the ndc and then if i choose the mpp you realize that these are the regions that they had a lot of votes right so comparing the ArcGIS to the shape map, I can score it for accuracy. You wouldn't have to struggle trying to look up the exact positions, right? Because it's built on a bigger geo data platform, it is more likely you will get the location correct without manually plotting. So that's good for those who want accuracy. Of course, there are more examples that you can explore beyond this. But the other challenge I have is the inability to display more than two values at a time and the fact that you have to work online but this is a good addition for those who work with maps i'm sure you can explore all the options and then see which one works best for you so as usual please practice and add it to your list of power bi skills thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video if this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your whatsapp you can send add to this whatsapp number will add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.